I'm going to be talking to Stephen Landry, who's the chairman of a new investment fund called Purpose ESG, and ESG stands for Environment, Social, and Governance. And it's set up in Vancouver, BC to invest in clean tech companies, for example. And uh, welcome to the interview, Stephen. Thank, thank you very much, Mark. I'm very great to be here today. Well, look, uh, this is a, a trend has been around for a while now. Uh, you're looking for investors who want to uh, invest in uh, clean industries and startup, primarily startups, I would imagine. Uh, tell us about uh, why you set up the fund and uh, what the kind of companies that you hope to invest in. We, uh, we set up the Purpose ESG fund to two things. One, attract investment from uh, large uh, uh, equity investors as well as private retail investors. And on the other side of Purpose ESG, our goal is to work with various startup companies that are working in the clean tech uh, area and support them with, with support from Purpose ESG to become profitable sooner than originally planned, perhaps. Now, Steve, I've talked to a few other uh, portfolio managers in this space, and they had mentioned that there's a lot of capital chasing uh, not that many companies. Uh, does Canada have an ecosystem of clean tech startups? Are there enough, you know, that uh, for investment investment groups like yours to uh, to support? Well, Canada has a history of being a, a superpower in the energy field, and and so Canada. Uh, was our first and, and major area of where we want to invest in both the companies and, and uh, investment from into our company as well. So we expect Canada to be, we, we expect Canada and the U.S. together to be approximately 70% of our investment. Well, let's, there's five areas where your, uh, your fund is going to be investing. Uh, let's go through them one by one because I'm, I'm couple of them are very interesting. Uh, electrification is of interest because uh, governments around the world see electrification, you know, electric vehicles, electric industry, heat pumps and homes uh, as a key part of climate policy. What kind of companies will you be looking for in this space? Well, in the electrical field, uh, we're, look, we're, we're looking at companies with uh, not only on the, on the EV battery side, and, and as you know, large push to electric vehicles and uh, not only in North America, but the world right now. So there are several companies, both in Canada and the US that are actually making batteries in order to uh, provide the supply necessary for the demand. But also on the far end of, of that, we're starting to see the requirement and necessity to have recycling of batteries when that electric vehicle starts to get into its second uh, and sometimes third battery. Now, your second uh, area that you're looking at is food tech. And this is interesting because uh, some of, uh, you know, thinkers like uh, Tony Siba, for instance, see this as a, an area for with tremendous growth in the next decade or two, alternative protein, urban and vertical farming. Uh, what kind of businesses are you looking at in this space? Well, in the, we're looking at businesses that uh, are, uh, like you said, alternative protein, uh, food to table uh, type uh, of, uh, sorry, farm to table, which are becoming very popular both uh, in, uh, in, in, in suburban areas and in rural areas as well. Uh, and, and also companies like Eat Beyond, uh, uh, where, where they have the uh, alternative burger uh, and also the um, uh, zero emission farming, the same thing on electric vehicles, but a lot of farm tractors, a lot of the equipment now uh, is, is made with uh, lower, uh, lower or, or in some cases, no emissions in order to uh, do the farming in a much cleaner and less uh, carbon in the atmosphere type of way. In this particular uh, uh, field, uh, Stephen, are, are you looking at uh, the, uh, the companies that are making protein in the lab, uh, you know, using uh, not farming per se, but uh, creating protein and other foods, uh, you know, basically in an industrial style? And it's mainly in the actual farming itself. So uh, even though the end result is a alternative protein type of, in some cases, burger or otherwise, or pizza crust. Uh, but now in some, in, in most cases, uh, uh, what we're looking for and having discussions with is, is companies that are 
are looking to reduce carbon in actual agriculture activity. But the third area is hydrogen. Now this gets a lot of attention and Canada has a hydrogen strategy and most of the provinces uh, have hydrogen strategies. Uh, what kind of, uh, where are you looking for here? Is it the production, the transportation, the end use? Well, all of that. Uh, uh, it's a, uh, an interesting hydrogen is a, uh, an amazing energy and it's a real high pressurized energy in, in its uh, different current forms. But hydrogen in, in the probably the what used to be kind of a 10 to 20 year plan for hydrogen is, is starting to be squeezed into five to 10 years and maybe even five years as there's a push for hydrogen fuel cells uh, and the ability for uh, the, the technical people, the engineers to be able to find a way to compress hydrogen much the way natural gas is compressed today. Uh, in order to be able to use hydrogen in a, in a uh, normal day-to-day -day setting. The fourth area is carbon capture and storage. And uh, I'm particularly interested in this because Canada is a big oil and gas producer and, and uh, there are any number of uh, carbon capture uh, proposals on the table and, and some policies coming from the federal government we hear. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, your investment plans for this area? Now, carbon reduction, which includes carbon capture and other forms of carbon reduction, that's probably that and recycling we see as the biggest uh, uh, forms of non-starters or the areas that we need to improve ourselves upon on Earth. And, and so carbon reduction uh, is not only a big thing in, in the U.S., and, uh, but more, even probably more so in Canada. Uh, and other jurisdictions in the world have, have already started. And as you know, the different forms of, uh, uh, of, of meetings and, and, and uh, different uh, types of like Paris and, and more recently in, uh, in the UK, uh, making the promises necessary to reduce. Now, reducing, reducing carbon and re is also comes, is recycling starts to come into play as well. Uh, and so, you know, carbon, carbon capture, there, there are amazingly some companies in Canada that we're, we're having really serious discussions with, uh, in fact, in BC and Alberta, Saskatchewan, that really know how to do alternative things with carbon. And, and th those are the companies that we're spending a lot of time with right now uh, in order to see if we can become an investor in their company uh, so that they can join our, our portfolio. And lastly, the circular economy. Now, this is a, a term that gets bandied about a lot. Um, what kind of companies are you looking for here? Well, that's really the big one is the biodegradable plastics. And there's so many tons of plastics that get thrown in the ocean each year and end up in landfills. And there's, uh, uh, it's, it's really become a, a real, uh, detriment to the world and uh, so we got to get after the plastics and biodegradable companies and so we're we are working today with um, three different companies both on the U.S. side and the Canadian side uh, that are becoming proficient in uh, recycling before plastic uh, re being able to recycle plastic forever uh, so that we can so that we can avoid putting uh uh, plastics and in, in the ocean and in the, in the landfills. Now, Steve, when you approach investors about uh, supporting your fund, uh, what are they telling you? What, what, why are they interested in shifting, you know, maybe from uh, fossil fuels or other industries into these kinds of clean tech and uh, startups? Yeah, it's uh, no longer acceptable in some circles, especially with publicly traded companies to just simply have a return on investment. Um, and, and especially if you have a large return on investment, it's really important today to also, along with that return on investment, to have a, uh, an ESG uh, part of your, of your program. And, and, and shareholders meeting, especially annual shareholders meetings, are where um, shareholders uh, and others are, are not just accepting that return on investment unless the companies also have uh, material comparisons and numbers of how are how is each company improving on E, S, and G on e, each of those three areas. So now it's becoming very popular uh, 
uh, to have a, uh, an ESG uh, edition supplement at shareholders meetings. And that will, just get, that will just get more involved in the future. And when that happens, uh, those, those people, those investors uh, that we're discussing this with, they already know the importance of it. Uh, they also realize the future of these publicly traded companies are going to require ESG parameters and measurements in their, in their business. They want to get in front of it. And there are some reports today that say that uh, sustainability and ESG metrics in companies is really improving that overall return in line with the monetary return. Well, Steve, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.